reading. If you have a Bible with you there, uh, if not, don't worry. In Luke's Gospel, please, and chapter number uh, seven, the Gospel of Luke, and in chapter number seven, and verse 37 says, Behold a woman in the city which was a sinner. Uh, she had been forgiven, and she knew the Lord Jesus was there, and she comes in to express her gratitude. Uh, a woman which was a sinner. Uh, now, just look down, please, to verse number 40. And Jesus answering said unto Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, or I like to add another word in there, when they had nothing to pay with, he frankly forgave them both. Uh, just down to the end of the chapter, verse uh, 48, and the Lord Jesus said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Now that's our reading with the Lord's blessing upon his uh, word at this time. I want to talk to you this evening about the most important issue in your life. You say, Tom, you don't know me. How do you know what's the most important issue in my life? I have many important issues, and I'm quite sure you have. But tonight for this meeting and the few minutes that I'm speaking to you, I want to speak to you about what is undoubtedly the most important issue in your life. What is that? I want to talk to you tonight about the subject of the forgiveness of your sins. I want to talk to you about divine forgiveness. God's forgive the forgiveness of your sins. And I haven't a doubt in my mind that there's nothing so important as having your sins forgiven. And I'll explain that in just a moment or two. But the one thing that I do want to say to you as I come to, to speak tonight is this. That you can have your sins forgiven. It's a, it's a wonderful possibility. Because forgiveness is available. And it can be, and I tell you this, if you get it, it will be your greatest possession. There's a verse in the Bible says, in Colossians chapter 1, it says, in whom, that's in the Lord Jesus, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. And it's possible to say, I have all my sins forgiven. And so let me just come to the subject. Maybe before I speak to you about the forgiveness of sins, I should really tell you from the Bible that we have all sinned. I turn to a, a, a passage in Romans chapter 3 and I read this. There is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you say, what do you mean there's no difference? Sure, we're all different. But what the Bible is saying that in the eyes of God, there is no difference for all have sinned. And it's not so much the amount of sin. You may say, well, I haven't as many sins as someone else. It's not so much the amount of sin or even the type of sin. What the Bible is telling us in Romans 3 is this. That all the world, every person in the world is guilty before God. And the fact of sin is this. We've all sinned. There are no exclusions. And when the Bible says all have sinned, it means everyone. And come short. We have fallen short of the standard of God, which is absolute perfection. Actually, the standard is the Lord Jesus. He never sinned. And we have fallen far short of that standard. We have all sinned. In fact, in the story that I've read to you, the Lord Jesus told about a creditor who had two debtors and one owed 500 pence and the other owed 50 pence. One owed 10 times more than the other. 
But the point of the story that the Lord Jesus told and what the Lord Jesus told was for the help of a man called Simon was not to show the difference, but to show this. They were both debtors. And so, my dear friend, with the Bible in my hand, I want to assure you that all of us have sinned. And all of us need to have our sins forgiven. I say it's the most important issue in life. You say, what makes it so important? Well, let me just tell you one or two reasons why it is such an important matter in your life. The first reason I'll give you is this. Your sins have separated you from God. Your sins have broken the link with God. The Bible actually says your iniquities have separated between you and God and your sins have hid its face from you and sin has severed the important link that we have with God. And in our sins, it is impossible to have fellowship, a relationship with God. And if you are going to enjoy the uh, communion and the fellowship and the relationship with God that is so important, you need to have your sins forgiven because God is holy and we are sinners and uh, our sins. If we're going to have a right relationship with God, we need to have our sins forgiven. Let me give you another reason why the subject of forgiveness is so vitally important. In our sins, we can never, ever be in heaven. It is impossible to be in heaven without your sins being forgiven. Heaven is a holy place. And in the, uh, in the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, we read about heaven. There shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. And sin cannot enter there. And if you and I are going to be in heaven, we need to have our sins forgiven. Of course, I would need to say this to you. We are all going to eternity. When we finish our days on earth and our life on earth is over, we go to what the Lord Jesus called the world to come, eternity. And in eternity, there's just two places, not three, not one, just two places, heaven and hell. And my dear friend, I say to you very kindly tonight, thank you for listening. If your sins are never forgiven, you will never, ever be in heaven. The Lord Jesus said, if you die in your sins, he said, if you believe not that I am, ye shall die in your sins, and whither I go, you cannot come. And, uh, well, I, I, I say it kindly to you, if your sins are never forgiven, You'll be in hell for eternity. If your sins are never pardoned, please be assured that your sins will be punished in hell. That's so solemn. But I'm glad tonight that I have come not only to tell you that you need to have your sins forgiven, you do, my dear friend. But I want to talk to you about how you can have your sins forgiven. And so from this passage, I want to speak about the forgiveness of sins. The first thing that I appreciate from this passage is this, that forgiveness is free. It's free. The Lord Jesus told a story here about a certain creditor who had two debtors. And uh, I, I added a word, when they had nothing to pay with, that's because they had no money. They couldn't pay the debt. And when they had nothing to pay with, here's what it says. He frankly or he freely forgave them both. And I learned from this passage that forgiveness is free. You don't have to put your hand in your pocket. You don't have to pay for it. Actually, you couldn't pay for it because just like these two debtors, we have nothing to pay with. Sin is a debt. 
And it's a debt that we cannot pay because we are helpless. We are penniless. We cannot pay the debt. We have nothing to pay with. But forgiveness is free. There is nothing we can do to merit forgiveness. Some people think if I try a little harder, if I go to church, if I get baptized, that it will bring me into favor and forgiveness. No, my dear friend, there is nothing we can pay. There is nothing we can do. We are helpless when it comes to the forgiveness of sins, helpless in ourselves. But the good news is this. Forgiveness is free. It's a gift from God freely offered to you tonight. You can have your sins forgiven. Forgiveness is free. Well, I say that. Let me qualify that. Just in the story here, the two debtors, they were freely forgiven. But the thing is this, the creditor, he bore the cost himself. Yes, he freely Frankly, forgive them, but he, he took the, he bore the cost himself. It wasn't free to him, but he bore the cost and the debtors were set free. My dear friend, that's really the story of the gospel that I want to tell you about tonight. Because while forgiveness is offered freely to you, it costs God everything. You say, how much did it cost? Well, I really couldn't tell you, but I'll tell you what the Bible says. Here's how much it cost God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so that you and I could be freely forgiven, God spared not his own son. God had one son. He sent him into our world. Sent him to die upon a cross. And on that cross, the Lord Jesus paid the price of forgiveness. Sometimes we sing, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed me white as snow. And the price of forgiveness, it's an infinite price. There's another hymn we sing sometimes, and it says, What mighty sum paid all my debt when charged with guilt I stood, and hath my soul at freedom set? Tis Jesus' precious blood. And the Lord Jesus, he paid the price of forgiveness by the laying down of his life, the shedding of his blood. He suffered for sins in the place of the sinner. He died. That was the price. And the infinite sacrifice of himself upon the cross was the price that was paid. But he paid it in full. And whilst I cannot really tell you how much he paid, as a gospel preacher, I can come online tonight and tell you this, that he paid it all. Maybe you don't know what I, maybe I should use it. We sing sometimes, not a mite. Maybe you might say not a dime or not a cent was left unpaid when he, my judgment, bore. And on the cross, God laid upon him the iniquity of us all, and he paid the price of forgiveness, paid it in full. And the sacrifice that he offered was sufficient. It was a once-for-all sacrifice. Here's what Hebrews chapter 10 says. This man, after he had offered one sacrifice, there's no need, there's no need for any more sacrifices. The one sacrifice of the Lord Jesus, when he gave himself on the cross, was enough, enough for God. God is satisfied. God says it's enough. The price is paid. And now I can righteously offer forgiveness to anyone who wants it. And that's just it. Forgiveness is free. Let me tell you another thing. Forgiveness is full. That is, it's a complete forgiveness. Here's what the Lord Jesus said to this woman. He said, your sins are forgiven. Not 95% of your sins. 
not the most of your sins. He said, your sins, all of them are forgiven. Can I say to you tonight, my dear friend, when God forgives a person their sins, he forgives them all. Wouldn't would it be an awful thing if he forgive them all but two or three? Because one sin will keep you out of heaven. But when God forgives a person, he forgives them all their sins. There's a lovely verse in the Bible that says, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. And it's, it's a comprehensive forgiveness and it's a complete forgiveness. I go away back into the Old Testament and I think it's Psalm 103 and there's a verse there and here's what it says. As far as the east is from the west. That cannot be measured. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. There's another uh, picture in Isaiah uh, chapter 44. And here's what, here's what God says. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a cloud thy sins. And when God forgives a person their sins, they're gone. We might forgive but we don't forget. But God says their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And when the sins are forgiven, they're gone. They're gone forever. They're all taken away. And uh, that picture in Isaiah 44 is of an eastern sky, a blue eastern sky. And there's a little cloud in the sky. And uh, the wind comes, blows the cloud away, and there's no trace of it left. It's a clear blue sky. The cloud's gone. You couldn't find it. You couldn't even locate where it had been. It's gone. That's what happens when God forgives a person their sins. He takes them all away. It's a full forgiveness. Let me tell you another thing. This forgiveness is not only free. It's not only full, but it's forever. What the Lord Jesus really said to this woman, he said, your sins are forgiven. And what that really means is, he said, your sins are forgiven now and they'll always be forgiven. It's an everlasting forgiveness. That verse I quoted in Hebrews chapter 10 says, uh, God says, their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Not ever. They'll never come up again. There'll never come a time when God will say, well, what about those two? They're gone. They're gone forever. Forgiveness is forever. I'll tell you another thing. Forgiveness is for everyone. This offer of forgiveness is for all people. No one's left out. You say, Tom, but... You don't know how many sins I have. I, I don't really want to know and I don't really care because I want to tell you that no matter how many sins you have, they can all be forgiven. And this offer is to all people. There's a, a word that is in the Bible and it's a big word. It's whosoever. Uh, sometimes we quote a hymn, that grand word. Whosoever. It's a Bible word. You have it in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But in Acts chapter 10, the apostle Peter is preaching and here's what he said. Whosoever believeth in him, the Lord Jesus shall receive forgiveness of sins. And the offer is to every person, anyone, everyone, whosoever. And so, my dear friend, I tell you about this genuine offer of forgiveness. It's free. It's full. It's complete. It's forever. And it's for everyone. Just as I bring my remarks to a close, how do you get it? It's offered 
But how do you make it your own? How do I come into the good? How can you come into the good of this offer of forgiveness? Well, the answer is in the last verse that I read to you. The Lord Jesus said to this woman, he said, your faith has saved you. And forgiveness is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That verse I quoted in Acts 10, whosoever believeth in him. And salvation, I say, is a free gift. But you can have it when you place your trust in Jesus Christ. When you rest totally upon him. You see, it's free. How do you make a gift your own? You just receive it. You take it. You don't pay for it. You don't pray for it. You don't work for it. You take it. And my dear friend, God offers you this wonderful forgiveness. The principle upon which it is obtained is faith in the Son of God. Thy faith hath saved thee. And so when you take the offer by faith, you receive the gift by faith. There's a, a gentleman wrote a hymn, it's well known. One of the verses says, nothing, we have nothing to pay with. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Vile I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior. Or I die. What a wonderful forgiveness it is. It can be your possession tonight. You know, it's 46 years ago. It was a Wednesday night in October 1974. I discovered that I was a sinner, that I had sinned against God, that my sins were against Him, that my sins would keep me out of heaven, that my sins would take me down to hell. And I cried to God. For forgiveness. That night I discovered. That when Jesus died on Calvary. He died for sinners. And if he died for sinners. He died for me. And I trusted him. And my sins were all forgiven. They're gone. It's a wonderful thing to have. Can I ask you just as I close this meeting. What about your sins? Let me just get personal for a moment before I close. Have your sins been forgiven? They can be. If you would like them forgiven, the offer stands tonight. If you place your trust in Jesus Christ, if you believe in him, God will forgive you all your sins and they'll never be raised again. What a wonderful thing. You know, that night that God saved me 46 years ago, I remember when the excitement died down and I put my head on the pillow, I was able to thank God and say with a poem that I knew, my sins are gone, my fears are o'er. I shun God's presence now no more. Forgiven. You can have it tonight. The Lord Jesus said to this woman, he said, thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace or go into peace. And when you get your sins forgiven, you get a peace that's calm as a river. That nothing else will give you apart from the forgiveness of sins. I, I, I say I'm finished. I think I maybe have a minute or two yet. The peace of forgiveness. You know, how did this woman know? I'll just say this to you and then I'll stop. How did this lady know that her sins were forgiven? Did she feel forgiven? No, here's how she knew. If you had asked this lady, how do you know absolute certainty that your sins are forgiven? Here's what she would have told you. Jesus said, 
your sins are forgiven. And she says, I have his word for it. I said, you can have your sins forgiven. And you can be sure. Because the guarantee of the word of God is this. Thy sins are forgiven. The peace of forgiveness, the pledge of forgiveness, the word of God. It's the word of God that makes us sure that we're saved and sure that our sins are forgiven. And that's enough for me. I trust it will be enough for you. May the Lord bless his word. Uh, please think about the most important issue in your life and make sure that you get it settled even tonight. Thank you for listening. May the Lord bless you and bless his word.